All right, guys, comfort food season is coming to an end. But if you know me, that's never stopped me before. So guess what's on the menu today? More comfort food. I'm going to show you guys how to make shrimp etouffee. Meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. All right, people, to get the party started, we got to get started on our shrimp. And for that, we need to peel and devein these. So real quick, pinch the body, grab the tail, slides right off. Then grab the tail and peel the body. Two moves and you're done. Take your paring knife down the back of the shrimp, and then we're gonna remove that vein. This is the intestinal tract. The vein underneath the shrimp is not the intestinal tract, and there's no reason to really remove that um, unless you're crazy and you know you just wanna be OCD, but it's not the intestinal tract, and uh, there's no reason to remove it for cleanliness or sanitation purposes. But the one on the top, you do wanna get rid of that. So just repeat that process for all of your shrimp. Give them a good rinse, make sure they're nice and clean, and then dry them off. Once the shrimp is nice and clean, we're gonna season it up and set it off to the side while we prep our other ingredients. Put them in the fridge. A couple tablespoons of olive oil and some lemon bay seasoning or whatever your favorite Cajun blend is. We'll get the job done. Plenty of flavor going into this recipe, guys, so no need to over season the shrimp. Just a nice light application of lemon bay. Has a little citrus note, little Cajun flair to it, and it's perfect for seafood and poultry. There we go. Next up, my friends, is the Cajun Trinity. Very common in pretty much every Cajun Creole recipe. It's gonna have some variation of onions, bell pepper, and celery. We're gonna add some garlic to the flavor party as well. Looking for a nice, fine dice on the onion. In order to do that, I like to leave the root intact. Makes things a little bit easier. And this let your knife do the work. Make sure it's nice and sharp. One medium sized onion here. I like to use red and green bell pepper, mostly for the color contrast. So feel free to use whatever you have in the fridge or whatever's on sale at the supermarket. But uh, I like to you know, do that for presentation purposes. For the bell pepper, I like to chop the top off. So you can save that and use it. And then I slice around the core with the seeds. That way they don't get all over my knife and my cutting board because they're kind of sticky and they're a pain in the ass to clean up. So I like to do it like that. And you got all the usable stuff. Any leftover bell pepper, put it in the fridge for your omelet in the morning. So we'll use half a green, half a red. Again, a nice fine dice similar to the size that you diced up your onion. For the celery, real simple guys, just dice it up, same size as the bell pepper and the onion. Not rocket science, no right or wrong way to do it. You could also, if you wanna make it real small, just put it in a food processor and pulse it you know, a few times so it's nice and small. And the garlic, easiest way to do that, flatten in the blade, smash it, peel it, and then dice that up as well. Next up, we're gonna prep the andouille sausage. This is a smoked sausage that's common in Cajun and Creole cuisine. It's not in a lot of shrimp etouffee recipes, but I like to add it to mine. Adds a little bit more smokiness, a little more protein, some good fat to help flavor the roux. And uh, I just got it in the fridge, so we're using it. So we're gonna dice it up nice and fine, and then we're gonna allow that to render some of its fat, and then we're gonna sear the shrimp right in that andouille sausage fat. We're building flavor throughout. This is the beef andouille sausage for the pork patrol out there. They do make beef and chicken versions, so you can add it if you like. Or if you wanna keep it just shrimp, then by all means do your thing. This recipe works well with crawfish as well, so if you got crawfish locally, feel free to swap out the shrimp for the crawfish. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and cook our andouille sausage. Teaspoon of avocado oil going in and then the sausage going into a cold skillet. The reason why we're starting with a cold skillet is because we want it to render as much fat as possible because we're gonna use that for our roux and to cook our shrimp. So let it heat up slowly. Uh, once it gets brown and nice and crispy, we're gonna remove it with a slotted spoon. All right guys, so once the sausage is cooked perfect, we're gonna remove that with a slotted spoon, leave behind all that flavor in the skillet. I killed the heat also, that way the skillet's not too hot when it's time to add the shrimp. So we're gonna add those, cook them until they get to the color we're looking for. And then we're gonna remove that and finish cooking them once we get our 
etouffee going. Shrimp is safe to eat at 145 degrees internal temperature, so just keep that in mind. You also don't want to overcook your shrimp because it'll start to get nice and rubbery. Nobody wants that. Um, so what we're going to do is pre-cook it, get some color developing, and then finish it a little bit later. All right, so for our roux, we're going to do a little bit of avocado oil. Has a high smoke point, less likely to burn the roux. And then for flavor, we're going to add some butter. About a quarter cup of avocado oil and a couple tablespoons of butter. We're going to allow that to melt. To that, we're going to add our flour. Stir for about 15 to 20 minutes until we get the color that we're looking for on our roux. And then we're going to add in the trinity. In goes the all-purpose flour. You can use a whisk and a rubber spatula for this. I like to usually kind of start off with the spatula to make sure nothing's sticking to the sides and then I quickly switch to the whisk just to make sure there's no lumps in the flour. You don't want your heat to be too high for this either. There's no need to rush the process. Looking for a nice mocha to peanut butter color on the roux. Not quite as dark as a gumbo, but if you're feeling frisky, then go right ahead and take it that far. All right, guys, we have successfully achieved what I like to call a peanut butter colored roux. We're going to take it a little bit darker, and then we're going to add in our trinity. When you add the trinity, it's very important to turn the heat off because all of the water and moisture in the, the veggies is going to come out quickly, and sometimes it'll splatter. You don't want that to happen because uh, you're going to burn the hell out of yourself. So we're trying to avoid that. Best way to do it is to always lay it in there away from you. That way you burn your cameraman and not yourself. Got to look out for number one. And then also turn the heat down. So we're just about there. Maybe another two minutes or so. And then we'll be ready to add the veggies. And again, I'm just alternating between the whisk and the spatula to make sure nothing's burning, nothing's sticking to the bottom or the sides. And we're just about there. All right, so give that a good mix. The heat's still off, as I mentioned before. So we didn't do a great job of chopping a couple of these, but we'll fix it. Beautiful color. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the garlic now that the veggies got a little bit of a head start. Turn the heat back on. Tablespoon of worst word in the world sauce. Teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder. One tablespoon of tomato paste. And about a quarter cup of diced or crushed tomatoes. Get that in there over medium low heat. Give everything a good mix. And then we're going in with three cups of low sodium chicken broth. A little bit at a time. Bring that up to a boil and then reduce it down to a simmer and just let that cook down about 15 to 20 minutes, season to taste, then we'll add back in the protein, pour that over some white rice, you got shrimp etouffee. All right guys, we're gonna turn the heat down here, add our Cajun seasoning, a little Louisiana hot sauce, some green onion, save some for garnish, then we're going in with our andouille sausage, and our shrimp. It's smelling good in here, I'll tell you that. Give that a good mix. Plate this up over some white rice and you have yourselves a fantastic meal. This is the part where I say brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me guys, looking good. The only thing left to do is digging for the taste test, but before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. 
think I need a bigger spoon. These shrimp are rather large. Let's get a little rice, a little andouille sausage, and pick my victim on the shrimp. Mm. Here we go.